Seven days of only eating what I catch. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and read your Bibles. Shoots. What's up, guys? Got a lot of great content in this video. Uh, the rest of the dives are day dives. This is the only night dive. We got some recipes, how to cook lobster, how to cook taco, how to cook mempachi, how to cook kole, uh, how to cook stuffed uhu using pananu. Um, a lot of different things to look forward to right here. I'm getting my first fish of the week, uh, Pontanu, and you can shoot the blue Pontanus on Maui. You cannot shoot the blue Uhus. Uh, so there's a difference just before people start throwing up comments saying I'm, I'm shooting blue Uhus on Maui. No, I'm not. I'm shooting a blue Pontanu. And uh, these fish are a lot easier to get at night. During the day, I never three-prong them. I could shoot them during the day, but I never, or almost never, I should say, three-prong them during the day. But at night, they're just sleeping. You could just go up and three-prong them at night. So that's some of the benefits of hunting at night or spearfishing at night. Um, here's another one right here. And pretty soon, I'm going to grab a lobster. Uh, you'll see my first couple of meals are lobsters for the week which is uh, nothing to complain about that's for sure but yeah we got a lot more content coming up and stay uh stay tuned check it out i uh, got some awesome day dives some clear water and uh, a lot of fun Right here you can see there it is lobster right there on the side of that pipe uh, this is a female so I end up letting it go can't take the females you can tell they're females by the little swimmerettes they have small and female under their under their tail it was small and a female So here I get tricked. I think I see a nice fat lobster, but it's just the mold. Lobsters shed their shell when they grow, they get too big for it. And it looked like a lobster, but it was just the mold of a lobster. So that means there's a big one around here somewhere. So I start looking for it. What's up guys, day one of only eating what I catch for 168 hours for one week. Uh, this is our catch from last night, so we're gonna look at how to clean a lobster. So step one, I went night diving last night, so got a couple lobster and a couple pananu. Uh, put them on ice, so this guy's still alive, so you wanna first humanely kill it. Now it's dead. Now you're gonna to wanna to take the tail, get as much meat as you can, so you get a flay knife. Cut around inside that meat. See how I got my gloves on. I'm gonna take the tail, twist them, take it out. Now you got a whole tail full of meat. 
Then you want to get this, you see this line right here? This is its digestive tract. You snap its antenna, it's very prickly, you see that? You gotta shove it up the rectum, twist it around, pull them out, and out comes the digestive tract. And now you got a tail full of meat. When I cook this, I'll go more into detail, but I'm gonna cut the shell, cook the meat, and then you got a nice lobster tail right there. Shoots. So we got our lobster tail. Just wanna cut. All the way down. We're gonna bake it and pull it through. Once you got a nice cut down the middle, just gonna wanna break this open and get all the meat off the shell. And I gotta rub your thumb down the side. So you need gloves for sure. Get off the bottom there. There you go. Now it's gonna sit right on top when it's cooked. It's gonna look like that, except it's gonna look awesome. Just made our garlic butter hot sauce with some lemon juice. I use Creole seasoning, organic lemon juice, garlic, grass-fed butter, and some Hawaiian salt to make this delicious base for the lobster. Guys, day one of seven of eating what I catch. Uh, today's focus in the scripture was Hebrews 11.1, 1, confidence of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see. That's what faith is. And I got faith that God's gonna get me through this week in feeding me from the ocean. Uh, God, thank you for this food. Just very grateful for you and the sacrifice of your son and my incredible wife. In Jesus Christ, I'm gonna pray. Amen. That's good. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Cheers. What's up, guys? Day two of only eating what I catch. Uh, today, we got some Pontanu. Uh, yesterday, all I ate was lobster, and uh, that's not really anything to complain about, uh, but just had like four lobsters, and I was hungry. And right now, I'm super, super hungry. It's uh, almost two o'clock, haven't eaten anything yet, but luckily, I caught three fish. Um, the other day. So um, I'm going to be cooking up this pond anew right here. Show you here. Stuffed Uhu style. Nice. And if anybody's on a, on Maui and they, they need a kitten or want a kitten, got this. So mama's right here. The two little kittens. Hey. Two little kittens about Two days old, looking for a home. Let me know. All right, shoot. First, we're gonna be making some incisions called scoring it. Then we're gonna stuff it with garlic, pepper, salt. Uh, usually I use lop chong um, and then slather it with mayo. Put it on the pan, wrap it up, throw it in the oven. And that's a stuffed doohu right there. All right, guys, here we go. Smothered in mayo. Like I said, this recipe usually calls for lap chong or Portuguese sausage, but since I'm only eating what I catch, uh, I'm not using that. Also, you want to make it really taste really good, use some peanut oil over it. But uh, we're going to see how this turns out in about 40 minutes. Looking good. Oh, it needs a little more cook time. 
a little more cook time. So I decided to put the other pan new in the refrigerator, eat it tomorrow. And uh, I'll take these two and eat probably one of these today. So that way I'll have some food in case I don't, in case I don't catch anything for the next couple days. Dinner. What's up guys? Day three of this uh, one week eat only what I catch challenge. Um, woke up this morning, it's 6.50. About to go diving, trying to get some taco or uh, octopus. And uh, just trying to get something different on the menu. You know, the, the first day, all I ate was four lobsters. Uh, second day, I ate a ponanu. Just trying to ration in case I don't catch anything. And uh, yeah, I got I got two more fish and one more lobster tail. So I'm really trying to get some taco here on the menu and hopefully I can catch maybe some more fish too, just to be able to eat a little bit more uh, than just like one meal a day. So yeah, today woke up, read my Bible, Acts 18 and 19, and just really uh, convicted by the boldness of Paul uh, didn't let persecution keep him from sharing his faith. So, you know, if you're a believer in Christ, talk with it about someone today. You know, you don't have to shove it down their throat. You can just talk about it. And really, 1 Timothy 4.16 says that the way that you live, the example you set, is what's going to help people uh, become believers in Christ and become saved. So, you're the only Bible that some people will ever read. So, you got to live like Jesus. 1 John 2.6 Anyone who claims to Living him must walk as Jesus did. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, we'll get the cooking going, hopefully, if we catch. Amen. Shoots. All right, so this is my second dive of the week. And this uh, that turtle you just saw was, like, one of the biggest turtles I've ever seen. That thing was huge, bigger than me, probably weighed... 350, 400 pounds. That thing was massive. Right here, I'm going for some kole. So kole are also known as yellow-eyed tang. And they're super, super delicious. Really good to eat. Uh, so many people just crave them. And they're very sought after. So when there's a, a big event, like a wedding or um, a birthday party or something where you wanna feed a lot of your friends and family, Usually people request a fisherman to go out and catch kole and try to get like 40 or 60 kole. So there's one, boom, hit him, perfect shot. And you'll see a lot of times I miss him. So when I hit him and it makes that thud sound, it's, it's just such an awesome sound for a spear fisherman. So got one kole. As you can probably tell, this day was windy. And out here was windy, was semi-murky. Think for typical Hawaiian conditions, this is actually pretty murky. But coming from California, this is like super clear. So sometimes in the murk, you actually get the bigger fish to swim by you. Especially if you're reef diving because they just don't sense you're there. And if you're at the bottom waiting, waiting you can see some big fish when by you actually catch some bigger fish in the murk so here i'm going for another kole and you see they kind of spook made a little bit too much noise there at the beginning but boom get another one now i'm stoked i'm like okay i'm eating a couple kole for dinner this is gonna be awesome and a lot of times when you find kole you find the little kole spot so this whole dive i was out here for a couple hours this right on this ledge was where there were schools of Kole, schools of Toao, which you know from my other videos, that's the invasive fish here, one of the three invasives here on the island. So when you find a little spot, you just want to anchor your buoy, post up, stay right there, and just start loading up on what you can if you're uh, hunting to eat, right? If you're not hunting to
to eat, there's kind of like an unspoken rule where you just want to, you know, take what, what you need. And I've heard the, this unspoken rule before where choose five fish other yeah. than like, you know, yeah. uh, fish that are plentiful like mempachi or, or kole. Choose five fish and just choose uh, which five you want to take. Don't take more than you need. Um, here, found a taco hole. You can see, look right to the right. There's another taco right there. I didn't notice him until about right now. There, I noticed him. I'm like, oh, there he is. So I point to him. You're next, buddy. But I should have got him right now because he was an easy grab and this one was harder. And you'll see, when I get this one out, he inks. And the other taco takes that opportunity to use a smoke screen to get away. So right there, boom, he's swimming away right now. So I grab this one, and then the other one swam away. I go, ah, oh, I could have had a two for one on that dive. He's lost in the coral head. He's deep in there. I looked for him for about 10 minutes, couldn't find him. So could have had two taco, but ended up with just one. That's all right. At least we got one, yep. All right. This coral head has something special hiding under it. A fat daddy lobster. This thing is huge. I was so stoked to get my eyes on this. And you know, when I see a big one like this, I'm just hoping and even sometimes praying that it's a male. Because you'll spend 10, 15 minutes trying to get a lobster out of a rock like this. And then you finally get it and it's a female. And you gotta let it go. And you got sometimes Vana in your hand or other things. And Man, I got this one out here in a couple minutes, and it's a male, and I'm just stoked. Uh, right now, I can't reach it. You see, I don't know if you can see, he's right there on the top. Can't reach him. So I'm gonna try a different approach, try and get him from a different side. Come over here to this other side, and boom, he's right there. Oh, I get my hands on him now, I just gotta pull him out. Whoop, two hands pulling that guy out. And it's a male. Woo! So stoked on this. So, so stoked. Things like this are what make all the dives that you don't catch anything worth it. Yeah, baby. That's one fat bugger. What's up guys? Uh, day three of only eating what I catch. Uh, went out today. I uh, got a pretty nice catch, so this should last me uh, for sure today and tomorrow. And I'll try and stretch it if I need to, but you know, we got this nice big uh, male lobster right here. So this is gonna be good. Gonna make some lobster bisque. I uh, got a taco and gonna make, probably just eat that plain. Usually I like to make taco pasta. Really my wife makes taco pasta. And they got four uh, coles right here. This I'll fish fry and cut the heads off. This will be a good, uh, probably about five meals for me. So all glory to God and let's eat. All right guys, so we got our cole just caught. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the head off. Actually, I wanna use a different knife other than a fillet knife since butcher knife will be a little bit better or this will work perfectly fine. Cut the head off and then you're gonna gut, take all these guts out. So super, super easy. And once you get all that done, you're gonna have four nice coles that you can just cook up. And this is all meat right here. Boom. So we're gonna get this nice 
and ready to eat. All right, guys, so we got our coles, heads cut off, gutted. Uh, some people take this little barb out. I don't. I usually just, when I cook them, they get crispy and just eat them. Um, but we're going to score these, season them, butter pan, fry them. Uh, this is going to be delicious, but we're not going to do that right now. Right now, we're going to get the taco ready. So, first thing I did, turn it inside out. Took the ink sac and all the, the guts out. Now we're going to cut off the eyes and cut out the beak. So I like to just turn the taco on the side. Let its eyes just bulge out. Cut them off. So now we got the eyes all gone. The beak is underneath. I like to make a little slit just to make it a little bit easier. You don't have to. I didn't used to do this, but you don't have to. But make a little slit and then that same place where you cut the eyes out, put your thumb right there, push through. That beak is gonna come right out. If you're having trouble like I am right now, sometimes I use my teeth. And there's the beak. So we got the eyes and the beak and this is all meat that's gonna be nice. But we gotta tenderize it, and there's many ways to cook this. We'll look at that later. All right, so here we're making some lobster bisque. So we got our big male lobster right here. Uh, first things first, we gotta kill him. Then we're gonna cut the tail off the body so that it can fit in the pot. We're boiling some water for about five minutes. We're gonna put the head and the tail in. All the guts and everything stays in there. It gives it the flavor for the lobster bisque. And then we're gonna add a lot of uh, ingredients and seasonings and we'll take the tail back out, cut the shell off the tail, just get the meat and then add the meat to the lobster bisque and it'll taste delicious. Tune in to see the finished product. Just took them out of the pot, nice and red. All right, so here we got the lobster tail meat, the leg meat. We got the onion, garlic, tomato, celery, uh, paste. And then we got over here, got the lobster head. Ooh, soaking in that bisque, nice and juicy. Gonna put them all together. Final result right here. Lobster bisque. Mm. What's up guys? It's day four of this only eat what I catch uh, one week challenge. Uh, caught this cola yesterday. Uh, finished the lobster bisque today. And I still have one pan of new, uh, four cola and a taco that I'm able to eat. So. Um, we're just gonna make this cole, super, super simple, really good eating reef fish. Uh, all you need is some olive oil, uh, half a stick of butter, and some Hawaiian salt. So we're gonna score them, we're gonna fry them, butter fry them until they're golden brown, flip them golden brown on each side and sprinkle some Hawaiian salt in there and then it's good to eat. Shoots.
guys, Coley came out super good. I uh, got to eat right here, do a little taste test. God, thank you for this food, for always allowing me to catch. Thank you for my incredible wife and always providing food for us. In Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen. I'm going to start with the tail right here, uh, one of my favorite parts. And the skin. A little skin and meat right here. Mmm. That was good. You have some knowledge. That's good. All right. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And that's the stuffed pond in you right there. Ooh. With no sausage. But amen. Still going to taste delicious. Mmm. Mm, 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 mm. All right. Finished the first half. This pond anew. Second half will be for tomorrow. What's up, guys? It's day five of this uh, only eating what I catch challenge. And uh, all I've got left in my refrigerator is one taco and half a pond anew. And man, I've lost some weight for sure. Uh, it's going good though. You know, I'm getting, I'm, uh, I'm getting very grateful for like bread and rice because I haven't had a carb in like, man, it's been a minute since I had some nice carbs and uh, no sugar either, which is also something that's really good. Uh, I think I might like just start eating healthier after this. Uh, but for sure today I'm on my way to go try and get some lobster and just some any kind of fish really. So stay tuned. Uh, we're going to cook up that taco later today and uh, hopefully prayerfully catch some fish uh, for the next two days. Today for my quiet time, I read Acts 22 and 23 and man, Paul was like hated because uh, the message that he was spreading uh, by the religious people. He stirred up the religious people. They took a vow that they're not going to eat or drink. They're going to fast until they kill Paul. And, uh, you know, when you bring the Bible into people's lives, it's the same way. When you teach people the scriptures and it's not what they agree with, it's not what they believe or raised to believe, even if they're religious, even if they go to church, even if they read the Bible, if you show them things in the scriptures and it challenges their belief, a lot of times they're going to treat you the same way. They're going to hate you. They're going to persecute you. Say you're preaching a false doctrine. That's why it's important that we make the Bible our standard. Uh, we can't go by our feelings. We can't go by our emotions or traditions, like what people, our parents teach us. We can't even go by what the pastor teaches. We've got to go by what the Bible says. And uh, when you allow the Bible to have the influence on your beliefs in your life, it's going to divide the people. Some people are going to see the change in you and want to imitate you and be more like Jesus. Other people are going to hate you because it's contrary to what they believe. And uh, if you just believe what your family or your pastor teaches you growing up, that's why people are Mormon. Because why? Because their parents are Mormon. They're atheists because their parents are atheists. They're uh, Muslim because their parents are Muslim. And the demographics all over the world where people are what they were raised to believe. So I just want to encourage you, seek truth. Uh, study it out. Study out truth. And when you find contradictions, throw that thing out. And uh, for me, I've studied out a bunch of different things. And the Bible's the only thing that's been able to hold the test of time. So read your Bibles. Have your quiet time. Let's get to cooking here after we catch. Well, it's looking super windy, but clear. So we're going to get out there for a solo dive today. All right, found the no wind zone. All right, we're about to jump in the water. Found a, a nice little cove. Looks clear. No wind, low waves. Thank you. 
saw some scuba divers on this dive. That might have been the boat passing by that you saw. Uh, they're always looking straight ahead, never looking up, so they might not have even noticed me. But just uh, swimming by, they're not harming anything, just trying to have fun, just like I am. Uh, but there's probably not going to be many fish around them. So right here, I get pricked by some bonnet. This taco outsmarted me. Uh, I went in to grab them. Instead, I grabbed a handful of sea urchin, or what we call over here, vana. So you'll see my thumb right here, just trying to pull it out. I'm first trying to get the taco. I don't want him to get away, which he ended up getting away. And uh, I actually tried to reach in a second time and pull my arm out with my other hand, and I got some vana in my elbow. So <laughs> this taco, you know, sometimes you get them and sometimes you get got. So pulling out the Vana, if you ever get stuck with Steerchen, see how there's like long strands? You don't want to grab it from the base. I did that for so long and it, it just breaks off. You grab it from the very tip and then it could actually, you could pull it out of your finger or wherever. If you grab it from the break, base, it's just gonna break off and then you're just left with it. I still have it in my thumb, you know. Um, it's just gonna be in there for a couple weeks and then slowly go out. But um, I got some more in my elbow and then ended up getting that out. Now I find the shelf and you always wanna check under the shelves because that's where the lobsters are. And here we go getting this lobster. I'm trying to get it by the antenna, but you got to really get the base. If you ever are catching lobster, don't pull their antenna unless you're pulling it at the base. The base is a lot thicker. The antenna will just rip off, but if you pull it at the base, you can pull it out. And here, I'm really trying to get this guy out it's closer and closer. And then I see, oh, eggs, female, let it go. Just get a live and uh, just go right back where you are, breed, create some more lobsters so that myself and the rest of the island can can uh, eat. But while I was down there, I saw this fish in the back of the cave. Uh, this is a nice fish. Boom. Come out, come out, come out, and there it is. Uh, this is what's known as a alaihi or squirrel fish and they're super super spiny so you got to be really careful they'll like go right through your gloves uh, but they're really good tasting they taste so good we're gonna cook that guy up later and then right here i see that goatfish you see the goatfish is looking at something those things are masters at finding taco so sure enough oh there it is Thank you, Mr. Goaty, for finding me this taco. And now I got two taco to cook up and eat. So appreciate you, Go Fish. All right, here's the catch of today. Just got home, got a uh, taco, cole. Mimpachi, squirrel fish. Awesome. Good morning. Day six of eat only what I catch for a week. Uh, I ate a cola yesterday. Uh, finished off the Pananu. I got a taco, a uh, alaihi, squirrel fish, and menpachi. Uh, two taco left to eat. So... Got another couple days. I should be good, but I'm going out fishing right now. Uh, Lord willing, gonna catch something. I'm trying to get something like some sashimi, like a moo or uku, something real good. Uh, but sun just came up, about to head out. Yeah, today read Acts 24, 25. And just about Paul before uh, some authorities and holding his stance for the word of God. Uh, not being rude, but still being loving as he shares his faith. So that's my challenge for today. Just be as loving as I can. Uh, but invite someone out to, to church, invite someone to study the Bible because someone was 
so loving that they invited me out one day and it totally changed my life. So we'll get to cooking here soon. Uh, but Lord willing, we're going to catch and uh, we got a couple more days. Stay tuned. Shoot. All right. This dive was super fun. Uh, it was crazy. I learned a lot. One of my buddies is a local brother that's just super, super experienced. Uh, he took me to this spot and it looked windy, looked wavy. I probably wouldn't have gone, but he's like, bro, that doesn't matter. The visibility's still going to be clear. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, if you say so. And I get there and sure enough, it is like 50 foot visibility. So the this spot that he took me, the fish were actually kind of skittish, which seemed a little weird. There's an uhu right there. I'm thinking about going after that one, but just kind of looking around and see if he comes in. Never ended up coming in, but I go to see if I could take a shot and I could take a shot right there and I don't pull the trigger and I don't get another, another shot at it. So could have got that one if I was a little quicker. Down here again, and like you see, there's, there's a lot of life. Uh, but it's funny, you know, when there's some Polani, but you see an Uhu in the back, you, you don't shoot the Polani. When there's an Uhu, but you see a Moo in the back, you don't shoot the Uhu. When there's a Moo and you see an Uku in the back, you don't shoot the Moo. It's, it's just kind of, you see something that's bigger and better and you wait for it and you don't end up shooting uh, what's right in front of you. So that's kind of how this dive was. I could have shot a lot of different fish. There's a Polani right there. It could blast that thing. But I'm looking around, hoping that an Uku comes in or that uhu comes back and i just end up not getting anything on this dive at least this this dive right here i do get some later in this dive so right here got the three prong out now i'm going for stuff now i'm going for some cole uh end up going for some pachis later and there's one right here boom turns smacks them now, you know, I love eating cole. This is going to be really, really good. Every time I hit a cole, that magic thud, I love it. Here, I just got a pachi. I'm going for another menpachi. And my buddy actually taught me this technique. Instead of going straight up to the hole, go like 10 or 15 feet behind it and let the menpachi come out to you. And that's what happened. Do you see that? He was down in there. I landed like 10 feet behind. He came out, gave me the shot. Uh, you could see my tips bent. I got to get a new tip, but there it is. Nice pachi. Got a couple pachi today. Gonna cook them up. Good eating. Uh, I still have my one minpachi from yesterday. So we'll cook these guys up, fry them, and it'll be great. Got some minpachi, and I caught this yesterday, alaihi, aka squirrel fish. So here in the islands, we eat these things whole, at least the minpachi. We eat the head, the tail, the eyes, the bones. Uh, just We're just gonna score them, salt and pepper them, throw them in the deep fryer, and then when they come out, it's like a big fat meat chip. And you just dip them in the shoyu and crunch them. Uh, the bigger they are, the longer you gotta let them cook so that the bone gets nice and brittle. But this is an awesome, awesome fish to eat. So excited to eat, haven't eaten anything yet, and it's about 118, so excited to get some food in my system. This is definitely a difficult challenge, but glad we're doing it.
when the eye pops out and there's white, that's how you know it's all done. Ooh, my wife made this awesome uh, chicken curry that smells so good, but cannot eat it. So I've just been itching to get some of this fish in my stomach. All right. Guess you missed out, Nala. Got to be quicker than that. All right. Why do we do what we do? The love of Christ. You know, this is the, the motivation that the Bible gives us. That the love of Christ compels us. Yes. It's, it's the gas that gets us to heaven. It's the fuel that we put in the tank. Amen. The love of Christ. So why do we do everything we do? Why do we wake up in the morning and read our Bibles? The love of Christ. Why do we go out and share our faith with, with strangers and invite them to study the Bible? The love of Christ. Why do we come out to church and, and, and worship God in the park when everybody else is celebrating and, and eating and we're here worshiping God? The love of Christ. That's the motivating factor. Yeah. What motivates you? All right, what's up guys? Day seven of uh, Only Eat What I Catch. Uh, today we got the taco that we're cooking up and of course Noah always getting into, into my stuff. So I went ahead and got this Instapot. You could boil it too, but Instapot ready with water. Throwing the taco in there. Gonna put some uh, wine vinegar. I usually like to do some sort of alcohol, but I don't have any alcohol in my house right now. This guy's still eating. Look at that. Um, gonna get both the taco in here. And then uh, what we're gonna do is we're just trying to tenderize it. We're gonna take it out, cut it up, throw it on the grill. I usually like to throw it on the fire. And um, yeah, just make sure it's crispy so that I can eat it. Uh, so it's not so slimy. There's different ways to take off the slime, but that's how I like to do it. Uh, today it is 3.14, haven't eaten yet. I'm feeling super exhausted, really tired. Uh, but, you know, this is the last day. Tomorrow I'm going to eat like a nice big burrito or something with some carbs. So thanks for staying with me, guys. Uh, day's almost over. And uh, then I'll be getting some food. And I'll show you the finished process here in a second. Shoot. In other news, my little kittens are just learning to walk. The eyes just got open. Hey, they're learning how to walk right now. Oh, wobbly. There you go. There you go. They're born about the same day I started this challenge. Hey. Yeah. All right. The light's a little bright for them, so we're going to let them sleep. All right, Whew. that smells like taco for you. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, that looks good. Oh yeah, that's gonna taste good. Now the taco's all cut up. Put a little Hawaiian salt in that. Then we're gonna throw it in this fryer right here. Get it nice and crispy. All right. Got the taco cooking. Crispy right here, we're gonna try it. Ooh, baby. Mmm. That's good. 
All right, there. All right, there's delicious. Cheers. The first meal since it's day eight. My beautiful <laughs> wife. Guys, thanks for watching. I super appreciate the support. You know, I just got one question for you guys. Are you happy? You know, rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 on happiness. Seven years ago, I was trying to find happiness through sex, drugs, uh, money, just the, the immediate gratification that the world has to offer. And I was raised in a Christian household. I, I, I had never really studied the Bible on my own. And one day someone came up to me and said, hey, do you want to study the Bible? And I thought to myself, I'm already a Christian. I already believe in Jesus. But I had never made my convictions off the Bible. And I, I just want to read you one scripture right here. Psalm 119, a scripture that changed my life. Verse 1 and 2 of Psalm 119. Blessed are they whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. Blessed, a lot of people don't know what blessed means. Blessed means superlatively happy. A happiness that's only from God. So even on bad days, you can be happy if you're blessed. But blessed comes only from seeking God with all your heart. You know, I appreciate you guys supporting and watching this video. And I'm going to try and keep this short. But I just want to encourage you, seek out with all your heart. You know, God's calling you to go pro. Pray, read, obey every day. If you've been a subscriber, if you're watching, or if you just like the content of spearfishing and shooting fish and putting food on the table, I want to encourage you, read your Bible. God has something greater planned for your life. And you'll never be truly fulfilled. You'll never be truly happy until you start seeking God with all your heart. Guys, thank you so much for watching my content. As always, if you enjoy it, like, subscribe, and don't forget, read your Bibles. Shoots.